So um, we have a lot to talk about with regard to singing in the worship, and we've been talking about the worship, but I did want in a shorter format to talk about something rather specific, which is whether to sing or whether to play in the worship of God. Singing and playing are done by people in the world um, at many times in many ways, and I'm told that there are sometimes brethren who do things like that the scriptures are fairly plain about it regardless ephesians 5 it's 18 through 20 that tell us what to do which is be filled with the spirit addressing one another in psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody to the lord with your heart giving thanks always and for everything to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ so if you're going to chart this out you're going to say that we are commanded to be filled with the spirit we are commanded to address one another with psalms hymns spiritual songs we are commanded to sing and to make melody for the lord in the heart and to be thankful for everything this is all fairly straightforward when we sing we are to sing with the spirit and with the understanding our singing is addressing one another that is we speak to one another with the things that we are saying in the words of the song the melody that we make in our heart is part of the joy and the thanks that we give back to God as we worship him. Colossians chapter 3 is the other passage that talks about these matters specifically, where it says in the 16th verse, all by itself, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You will notice, of course, the similarity to Ephesians 5. But here, if we were to boil it down, it would be, let the word dwell in you, teach and admonish one another with the songs, the hymns, and the spiritual songs, and hymn God or praise God in our singing. So in Ephesians 5, we're told to be filled with the Spirit. In Colossians 3, we're told to let the word of Christ dwell within us. And this pertains to singing and worshiping him. In Ephesians 5, we are told that we are speaking with one another or addressing one another. In Colossians 3, we're told that we are teaching and admonishing one another. So that tells you what we're saying, I guess. But they're both of them something that requires the mind. And we help one another. They're absolutely in uh, unity on psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Well, the psalms, of course, are part of the Bible. You know them. A hymn is a song of praise directed towards God. A spiritual song would be a song with a spiritual topic in mind. These are the things that God will allow us to sing. Ephesians 5 tells us to sing and make melody for the Lord with the heart. Colossians 3 says to hymn God with thankfulness in the heart. Ephesians 5 follows this with, also give thanks <laughs> so they're almost the same thing aren't they word for word when it comes to the question of you know what are we doing when we sing well we are fulfilling the commandment of god god commanded us to do these things to be filled with his word to be filled with the spirit to speak to one another teaching and admonishing by means of the words of the songs, and these songs are to be specific things. It can't just be anything and uh, throw it up there and say it belongs to God. It has to be a psalm, a hymn to God, or a spiritual song. And we make melody in our heart for God, and we give thanks in our heart for God. That is a commandment. That's what we are supposed to do. So why not use instruments of music? Again, it's a small point, I think. It, it is a, a point of order, but it is nonetheless a point of contention in the world. Well, first of all, because the commandment is to make melody with your heart. The instrument in Ephesians 5 is specified. A lot of times people will talk about uh, the uh, underlying Greek there, the psalo, the verb, which... Uh, does give us our psalm, and it does mean plucking, there's no question. Plucking like a musical instrument, a stringed instrument. There's no question that it means this, but it also tells us what that instrument is in Ephesians 5. Not only does it use the verb for plucking, 
as making melody, but he also uses the instrument case uh, for the heart. So, uh, yes, we are supposed to be uh, making melody, but we're making that melody with our heart, not with a mechanical instrument of music. It's simply not there. We're commanded to make melody with the heart. Uh, the other thing would be, I guess, if, if you want to go down the path of saying, well, salo, salo means pluck, that means play, you have to play. Well, actually it means pluck, so you can only play stringed instruments. And where are all your instruments? Are you worshiping God or not? If you are, you're supposed to bring a stringed instrument to pluck, right? That's what it would have to mean if it meant that, but it doesn't. He gave you the instrument. It's your heart. And you're all, you all brought your hearts today, I noticed. <laughs> so that's good. An instrument cannot speak to one another. An instrument cannot teach or admonish one another. It might startle you, <laughs> but no, it cannot speak, it cannot admonish, it cannot teach. It cannot fulfill the commandment of God. An instrument cannot be filled with the Spirit, as we were told in Ephesians 5. An instrument cannot have an indwelling word of, of Christ in the heart. It has no heart. It has no soul. There's no Holy Spirit of God within it. There's no word within it. It's not capable of fulfilling this commandment. So it isn't a matter of uh, the silence of the scriptures, although those are real a real thing and they're binding. It is a matter of God told us what to do and how to do it. Uh, to take an instrument would be to do other than what he said. He told us how to make melody and what instrument to use. It's the heart. He told us to teach and admonish and to speak. He told us to have the word dwelling within, to be filled with the spirit. And there's no mechanical instrument of music that is capable of fulfilling these requirements that the Lord has commanded. So that's why um, we're not using the instruments. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that's why we're not using them. God has told us what he wants us to do, and this is what he wants. Um, we have the ability to do these things and to please him in a very simple way. I'm very thankful to God for giving us his word and giving us such clarity that we might understand what he desires and what glorifies him when we come together. And that's the nature of our God, isn't it? His power uh, is to give us a word that we understand. He made the mind, he made the understanding, he made the universe, he made the tongue, as he told, reminded Moses. <laughs> so he certainly knows how to speak in a way that we can understand him. The question is, will we listen? And as the teachers always say, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Today, are you a Christian, a child of God? Well, become a child of God that you might have for yourself forgiveness of sins and you might have these things to be thankful for. Not that you haven't got things to be thankful for, but so much more in Christ Jesus. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, we're told in Ephesians 1, will be yours in Christ. And only in Christ, there's not another way to get these blessings. If we can help you to obey the gospel, we are ready to help you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. We'll have water ready. We will do whatever it takes to be of service to you, to encourage you. Uh, the service of God is a safe thing in this place when we come together. Today, are you a Christian who has not lived right? Let us pray for you that you might be restored to God. Let us help you in your resolve with our own prayers. We're willing to get together, to talk, to study, whatever we can do. We're helping each other on to heaven. If you need today the prayers of the saints or you need to be baptized, please let your need be known by coming to the front while we stand and sing. <laughs>